Hello and welcome to the Moving Pathways Forward podcast series. Your host for today's podcast is Judith Allen Press, Principal Scientist at APT Associates and Director of Technical Assistance for the Moving Pathways Forward project. Our featured guest today is Dr. Deborah Bragg, Founding Director of the Office of Community College Research and Leadership at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Dr. Bragg will discuss advancements in career pathways that have roots in secondary career technical education, implications of that body of work for adult education instructors designing career pathways programs, and strategic decisions adult educators should consider as they develop partnerships to support career pathways efforts. Hi, Deborah. It's wonderful to have you here with us today. And let's start our conversation talking about the key activities in secondary career education. Uh, What are the ones that have really advanced career pathways in the past decade? Thank you, Judy. It's a pleasure to be here. I I look forward to our conversation. I would point to three advancements in career pathways that stem from earlier work on secondary career education. The first are advancements in articulation and dual credit that have really taken on greater proportion over the years. A lot of this work is in career and technical education. The national studies support this. And my experience in Illinois, that is uh, as many as 50% of our coursework and our dual credit coursework is in CTE. A second area that really relates to better sequencing of courses with credit between secondary and post-secondary is aligned with recognizing the need for rigorous programs of study. CTE's long history of serving special needs learners remains important, but additional attention is being paid to all learners, including those who are interested in advancing into academic and technical instruction that begins at the secondary level and advances to the post-secondary level. This increased understanding of of how to create pathways and programs that lead students to two-year and four-year credentials is important. And I believe there's increased understanding and acceptance of this. A third area really has to do with acceptance of all of this evolution um, and the importance that all students uh, need pathways to improve their economic and their uh, personal well-being. You mentioned uh, rigorous programs of study. If you think about that effort along with the national career clusters development, what are the implications, do you think, of this type of work for adult basic educators uh, who are beginning to look at career pathways and curriculum development? Well, we know that educators need resources and materials in order to bring about change, and the work in Career Pathways is really a part of that. The resources that have been developed over the last decade are more through the National Career Clusters framework, including uh, the identification of career clusters that align to uh, sectors of the economy, the career pathways and programs of study, are all identified with really tremendously valuable uh, materials for educators. They speak to industry involvement and to the development of academic and career technical frameworks that are useful uh, to developing and delivering new curriculum. So Deborah, let's talk about the post-secondary level. How has Career Pathways evolved in career and technical education in terms of credential development or program design and other aspects of CTE. I believe one thing we've learned over the last several years is that career pathways are really uh, about a comprehensive package of reforms that assist students to find their, their way through college and into careers. We've seen major developments in the notion of career pathways that have created, I think, an inspired wider range of reforms in post-secondary education, particularly the community and technical college context. Um, We now understand the importance of structuring curriculum and course sequences in ways that students understand. Um, We know the importance of advisors in helping students focus on 
what those programs of study are about and helping them understand how they can complete them, including understanding how the career focus is important to their, their future and will help them achieve their aspirations. We know the importance of contextualized and applied and work-based learning experiences to enable students to, to learn to engage in this kind of work they've, that they've chosen to do. And we know the importance of transitioning students into the workplace. Uh, major national organizations like Complete College America have uh, I think jumped on the idea of career pathways because they recognize the importance of this work and how important it is for all college uh, students. Um, and we also see application and transfer education. So these are important changes that are spreading even beyond, um, I think, where some of the early uh, visionaries thought this might go. Well, one of the things that we've seen in adult basic education as um, education educators begin to implement career pathways is the challenge of how to provide sufficient guidance um, at the beginning to help adult learners both figure out what their pathway might be and the types of education that they would need to be successful in those particular pathways. Can you speak a little bit about some of the findings from um, looking at career advising um, in guidance that might have implication for ABE field? Absolutely. I think especially with adults who are returning to education or completing their secondary education, it's really important to understand these adults have uh, bigger visions. They understand the importance of going to school uh, to, to uh, find a career. And recognizing that from the beginning is so important to the advising function. Um, it's not about helping students determine what the job they might want to get at the end. It's a helping to inspire those students to understand the importance of linking their college education to their career preparation from the very beginning of the pathway. This can happen through um, the creation of career and college advising courses, new models that are being implemented in states like Oregon, where you've had a lot of experience, um, Judy. We've seen this in our research as well, including pathways that start by giving students the opportunity to explore what uh, working in particular fields might mean and whether that is part of what students aspire to do with their careers. All of this needs to start from the beginning. It's, it's not about finding the job at the end. Uh, that's important, but inspiring students is about linking college to careers from the very beginning. Our next topic, Deborah, concerns the implications of secondary career pathways for the design of adult basic education partnerships. What are some of the lessons learned about partnership development and service provision that can help ABE students' development of career paths? I would rec recommend that educators think very strategically about the partnerships that they create uh, for uh, designing career pathways. ABE educators in particular need to think about the students who they are serving and the types of students that the services that these students need to be successful. The partnerships need to be inclusive and broad-based in terms of the stakeholders who can support students. So for example, if a large proportion of students are racial and ethnic minorities, English language learners, low-skilled or low-income, then who represents these groups in the partnership? I'm not talking about general representation. I'm talking about people who themselves have similar backgrounds and experiences and who can be part of concerted efforts to make sure these students' needs are met. This includes program design and program delivery, the identification of competencies, including cultural competencies that students need in order to enter these careers. Deborah, our last topic this afternoon concerns um, the advancements in adult basic education and its use of career pathways. Can you talk a little bit about um, what you've seen happen in adult basic ed? Yeah, after working in adult basic education, 
for a while as, as a researcher and somebody providing assistance, I became really inspired but by what adult educators are doing in the classroom and their commitment to students. A part of that inspiration had to do with their willingness to try new teaching methodologies. I've seen really very creative efforts in contextualized and applied teaching and learning in the adult education context. In many respects, I believe the adult basic education environment is more conducive to contextualize and apply teaching and learning than the K-12 environment where standardized testing sometimes rules the day. And content there can sometimes be narrowed to what students know and can do to pass a test. Um, it's hard to teach in a contextualized and applied manner when assessment is focused in this way. And in, in, from that respect, I think the adult basic education environment has provided that sort of liberty for educators to experiment uh, with all types of instructional strategies and to really um, try to meet the needs of their students. You raised the question of the challenges of assessing students uh, when the teaching has been contextualized and applied. We know uh, from pa our past experience in competency-based education, which goes back to the early 70s in our work with the APL study and then the National External High School Diploma Program, that applied performance assessment has always been an alternative uh, to standardized tests. Do you think that as we move ahead in looking at this type of uh, teaching and learning that there is a need for new thinking about efficient ways of assessing that are both reliable and valid? Absolutely. I do think the new movement uh, toward competency-based education, which as you point out is, is really an old movement, revitalized in, in the present day. I do think this is an opportunity for us to, to uh, experiment with and adopt new forms of performance assessment and it will really be required if competency-based education is going to take off. There's a lot of lessons that can be learned from the past, but a lot of opportunity in the current context, I believe, to implement more applied performance assessments, and I hope that we do see that in the future. Great. Thank you very much, Deborah. It's a pleasure talking Thank you, with you. Judy. It's always fun to work with mm -hmm. you. Thanks for listening today. We hope you'll tune in to all four of the podcasts in the Moving Pathways Forward series, accessible from the links ed LINCS-ED YouTube channel. For more resources on Career Pathways, as well as news about upcoming events, join us as a subscriber in the Career Pathways Exchange, a weekly email digest of the Moving Pathways Forward project.